When an engine doesn't start and a fuel delivery fault is suspect, testing the pulse pump remains somewhat mysterious. In this video, I'll show how I test the pump using a manometer. If no fuel comes from the pump during cranking, and flow has been confirmed from the tank to the pump, the pulse pump is the most likely component to be replaced. But sometimes this doesn't fix the problem, and we don't know where to go next. In small engine repair, a manometer is used for testing crankcase vacuum. It measures inches of water, which is a very low pressure value, much lower than inches of mercury, like a standard vacuum gauge. Using test hose and adapters, I've connected the manometer to the suction side of the pump. Pulse pumps are commonly rated for up to 18 inches of lift. This requires a vacuum of at least 14 inches of water. Keep in mind, I've seen no documentation from any manufacturer indicating a suction specification. I'm just using science and math to put a number out there. The Makuni and Walbro pumps seen here both draw a vacuum of 30 inches of water or more, which is sufficient to pull fuel as designed. If not, this indicates a problem between the fuel tank and pump. Either there's too much resistance to flow, or a leak that prevents the pump from lifting fuel. This could be something as trivial as using the wrong fuel filter. Low or no vacuum is an indication of a defective pump or a loss of the pulse signal. Before disconnecting the pulse hose to measure the signal at the pump, I like to test for a pulse signal at the oil fill. With the dipstick reinstalled, I'm expecting to see the same readings at the pulse hose. And as seen here, readings between locations are nearly identical. This is normal and good. If no pulse signal is present, or a significant difference is observed, there is a problem. If the pulse signal is missing or weak at the hose, possible causes are a leaking hose, a blockage in the hose like oil, or an internal engine blockage like sludge preventing the pulse signal from reaching the hose. Pressure pulses in the crankcase are the result of piston movement and crankcase sealing. If a low or weak signal is observed, possible causes are a broken connecting rod, a severe crankcase leak, or unusually low, like zero, compression. I have to reiterate these numbers being useful, but subjective. There is no specification of normal crankcase pressure pulses during cranking, and there is no specification of a minimum pressure pulse that will still operate the pump. Even with the dipstick removed, this engine still made a measurable pulse signal, pulled more than 14 inches of water, and still lifted fuel 18 inches. In my experience, using a manometer is still extremely helpful for identifying a pulse signal, as well as testing if the pump can pull a vacuum. 